All right, guys, so you want to learn how to play some defense in NHL 22. This video is going to help you improve your defensive game. I promise you that. So no matter if you're a Division 8 player or Division 1, you're going to learn something in this video in terms of playing defense in NHL 22. Now, year over year, I don't know if we've seen a gameplay difference like we have from NHL 21 to 22 in all aspects of gameplay. No longer are people just forcing passes through the middle. Your AI and yourself will actually intercept passes in NHL 22. That dramatically changes how you are actually going to attack the game because no longer do you have to just cram everyone into the middle in the hopes that you know a pass doesn't get through five different players the thing i've learned so far playing nhl 22 that the most effective way to play defense is at your blue line you don't have to defend and worry about shots on goal or dangerous chances they can't get into your zone so this video i'm going to show you my new method of playing nhl 22 in terms of defense and how to stop them before they even get started if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you give it a like it does help with the youtube algorithm and if you do enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel as we're pushing 30,000 subs all right guys let's get into how to play defense in nhl 22 all right first let's just touch on the strategies that i had talked about in my best strategies video and it was a very very aggressive approach nhl 22 if you can limit players time and space it is very very difficult for an opponent to get by because you can bump them off the puck the new stick in physics means that if you make an accurate po check and you're in tight, more often than not, you can knock it free. So I found that being aggressive early on in this game has been the most effective. However, today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use these strategies, at least offensively, to make sure that your opponent doesn't really have that many opportunities to score. First, we need to do a recap, though, of where your players are supposed to be in the defensive zone. Too often, I see guys pulling players out of position, and that might just be they're not really sure where they're supposed to be in the defensive zone when it comes to a specific card. So... In this instance right here, I'm going to show you exactly where each player is supposed to be and their responsibilities in each play. So in this instance right here, you'll see Ricard Raquel has the puck in the middle of the slot, but let's just, for the sake of the video and the example here, I'm going to show you on screen where your players are supposed to be. So Ulf Samuelson, okay, it's going to be broken down into five quadrants, essentially. Ulf Samuelson is the right defenseman in this situation. His job is to pressure the puck carrier in the bottom right. So if the right winger, or in this case the left winger, goes down into the corner, his job is to pressure him, and that's his player that he needs to take care of, okay? The right winger on your team, their job is the point man, the defenseman up in the top right of the screen. So anytime the puck carrier goes back up there, you want to switch to your right, your right winger to make sure that he is in position correctly. The other defenseman, that's your left winger's job in this scenario right here. That is your left winger's job whenever he fires it over to that left side. Now, your backside winger, so this would be the situation would be the winger that is not on the side of the puck. So he has got a very important role, probably the most important, because his role is to cover the backdoor one-timer. His job is to cover that winger that is trying to get open for that one-timer backdoor. And then your centerman, one of two options. Your centerman can pressure in the corner and help out your defenseman. So let's say it goes into the bottom right here. Your centerman can help Ulf Samuelson and pressure down low, but you have to remember that their centerman also has a role as well. So that's just going to come down to what the situation calls for but in most cases your centerman's job is the slot area and help with that coverage in the middle which is why having a centerman that's so big and has good defensive awareness is so important because they're able to knock people off the slot in those high danger areas so first let's talk about the goal here and my new way of explaining how to play defense for nhl 22 i mentioned using the 122 red and how to use it effectively i wanted to show you guys the way to use the 122 red effectively is to make sure that as your opponent passes the puck you are hitting R2 or RT, whatever console you're on, to switch to the player closest to the puck so that you can pressure immediately. This is going to be super effective against players that pass the puck through the neutral zone a ton because eventually, because of the new passing skill gap, they're either going to miss their pass, have a turnover, or you're going to be able to knock it free because they are going to have to move it very quickly to have any sort of space and time and any ability to do anything here. So that is why the 1-2-2 red, in my opinion, is so impactful in this game, and I still think it is the best strategy to use. Now, like I said, I wanted to come up with a defense or a system, have you, that any level of player could use. So this could be a Division One player, this could be a Division Ten player, Anyone can use this. It's obviously just going to be much more difficult against a more skilled opponent. But the basis of my defense is essentially making sure that you are always directly in front of the player with the puck so that you can poke it free. Sounds simple, I'm aware. But there is a very, very effective way to do it because a lot of people will pull players out of position and get guys all over the place that are lost. And there is a very easy way to frustrate your opponent beyond belief 
by playing this style and doing it the correct way. So what you are trying to do, like I said, I'm going to call this the parallel defense. It's a lame name, but it's the best way I can, best thing I can come up with. You are going to try and stay dead in front of the puck carrier so that you can hit R1 and po-check the puck free. All right? The po-check in this game, not the defensive skill stick. I'm hitting, I'm talking about hitting R1 is the most effective way to knock the puck free in this game. When you hit R1, your player will move his stick and attack the puck, not the player. He will attack where the puck is when you hit R1. Higher the stick check rating will increase the accuracy and decrease the time it takes to actually get the po check off. That is why the stick checking stat is so important. Now, what is extremely important about this style of defense is that when opponents start going left and right in the neutral zone, that you do not chase. The entire method of this defense is to literally switch to every single player in a parallel line. Think of it as five guys at the blue line or five guys in the neutral zone, and you are not changing lanes. You are switching to the player the second the guy goes too far left or too far right so that you will remain in position. The second you chase with one player, that is going to open up time and space for him to either swing it back or to just be able to walk around. It is very, very important, and this is the entire basis of my defense. All right, so now obviously every single play is not going to be on a breakout like this, and if you find yourself not able to do this with the 1-2-2 red, go ahead and switch to the 1-4 just to get a basis for this, just to get a full understanding. It's a lot easier with the 1-4. However, I don't think it's as effective because it allows them to come up the ice a little bit more. However, if, if it does help in terms of making sure they don't enter the zone, if you want to go ahead and run this defense with the 1-4, that's just as fine as well. It's a little bit easier just off the rip. But again, the main goal is to make sure that when you switch, you po-check so that you knock the puck free. And making sure that you don't chase will make sure that all of your AI are in the correct position so that when you do switch, you're in an easy chance to knock the puck free and get a break the other way. I think one of the biggest things that you can do to help teach yourself how to play better defense is to stop staring at the player with the puck. This goes for offense too, and I'll cover that in my offense video, but the longer that you stare at the player with the puck, the more options that he is going to create because he's probably looking elsewhere. This is especially in the higher divisions. Lower divisions, they're probably in the same situation as you where they're two one-on-one -on -one, trying to focus on that too much. If you make your po check and you miss, don't sit there and spam R1 because that is going to make him give a slow animation. He can easily get around you if he's decent at protecting the puck, and I'm going to show you how to protect against this strat as well. But yeah, you want to make sure that you're looking elsewhere. So while they're attacking you at the blue line or even in the offensive zone, make sure that you have an eye. After about a second or two, just quickly look off to the far side to make sure that, that isn't opened up because that is usually where the better players are looking. It's not the guy with the puck or the defenseman right in front of them. All right, now lastly, let's talk a little bit about defensemen and the actual stats and things that can help you with this strategy specifically. There's been a reason why so often and not that I've said Adam Foote is the best card I've used on defense in years, and it's because of not only his size, above six foot is what you want to aim for, his speed, 90 obviously is phenomenal, his shot's good offensively, but it's his fact that he's got great defensive awareness and stick checking. Again, the stick checking stat is going to be imperative for this strategy strategy. The higher the stick checking stat, the more accurate the poke and the faster it gets off. But also the zone ability of shutdown is so important because if you either get it as a zone ability or a superstar ability, one, it's super cheap, but two, it makes the poke check almost automatic and it helps out with this strat so much. It is just disrupts almost every play if you're within the realm of Adam Foote. That is why I enjoy it, using him so much. And when you pair this strategy at the blue line with guys like Adam Foote, you're laughing. So guys, I will have a video that will follow up to this, a little some more advanced tips, but this is the basis of what I'm really doing on defense. And in the defensive zone, like I said, just learning not to chase, keeping your players in position is going to give you such a gigantic boost already. But it's the stuff at the blue line. If you're in the neutral zone, you're able to start using the parallel defense, I guess that's what we're going to call it. Uh, I think you guys are going to have tre tremendous success. Let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.